Today on Mid-Missouri Art News, artists Brandy Rackers and Lainey Strange will be sharing their art world and what's happening in that art world with us. Welcome to JCTV Mid-Missouri Art News, supported by many art enthusiasts around the country, uh, Mid-Missouri, and uh, even overseas, thanks to our YouTube uh, uh, channels. Coming to you from the capital city of Jefferson City, Missouri, I'm your host, Rick Jay, and I can say two special guests today, Brandy Rackers and Lainey Strange from the Jefferson City area. Please join me first, if you will, as I turn uh, first uh, welcoming artist and sale uh, spokesperson for the Jefferson City Art Club, Brandy Rackers. Uh, welcome, Miss Rackers, uh, to Mid-Missouri Art News. Thank you. Thanks for having us, Rick. Thank you. Uh, Brandy, if I may call you by your first name, please tell us a little bit about what makes up your world uh, uh, known as Brandy Rackers. I know it's really uh, right now an uh, inspirational point for you and family, so uh, yep. please uh, tell us a little bit about Brandy, if you will. All right, I will. Um, as you said, I'm from Jefferson City. Um, I've loved art as long as I can remember, going way back to my childhood when my mom would let me fill pages and pages of watercolor. Um, mm -hmm. But now, growing up, I have become an art educator. I went to school at Missouri State to get my undergraduate um, in art education, and I'm going to be beginning my ninth year of teaching at Battle High School this coming year. Excellent. Um, we, my husband and I, Eric Rackers and I, we were in St. Louis for about eight years, um, and then had my daughter, Genevieve, um, and decided we needed to be a little bit closer to family. So we came back to Jeff City. Excellent. Um, it was a really tough decision to move back because we had a lot of friends and loved the environment up there, but it's been a really great choice. Um, since moving back, we have bought some property in Jeff City um, and redone an old house. We have 10 chickens now, two cats and a dog. Um, my daughter is three and a half now, and we're expecting our second um, in October. Excellent. Excellent. Yep. And would you, do you have any um, uh, shout outs that you'd like to give today while you're on the show? Oh, uh, family has been huge. That's what made it so easy to come back to Jeff City. So my grandparents, my mom and dad, super supportive of my artwork, my in-laws, um, lots of cousins, aunts, uncles, everyone is always right. so supportive of what I do. Um, and I'm really blessed to have them. Excellent, and they're mm -hmm. blessed with your artwork. I believe it's awesome. <laughs> Thank I've you. I've reviewed it, and, uh, and I'm so excited about having you here with us today. So mm -hmm. thanks for sharing your, your personal with us. Well, can you tell us, uh, for everyone, uh, how you became first inspired to become an artist, mm -hmm. and what now inspires you to continue on? It sounds like you've, you've got a lot of inspiration to look forward to a teacher, instructor now at the battle. Yes. High school. Um, like I said, art has always been a passion of mine. I love getting those art kits from my grandparents or from my aunts um, that have a little bit of everything in them. Um, and I just love to explore. And so I knew art was going to be my career. Um, and then education is something that just kind of found me. Um, I've always been drawn to sharing my passion with other people. And being an art teacher makes that very easy for me to do. Um, I got my master's while teaching full-time up in St. Louis at Lindenwood University, um, and it completely changed my outlook on making art. It used to be a very technical challenge, um, which it still obviously is, but the conceptual aspect came into my art making, and I became more connected and grounded through my work. Yes. Um, and that's really helped to motivate me as a future artist, you know, yes. as, as the technical stuff becomes a little bit more easier, the conceptual stuff is, is never easy. Exactly. Um, and the process of making art has become so much more rewarding, knowing that I'm doing it as a way for me to not only be connected to my environment, myself and my viewers, um, but to also 
just explore the process. Um, the product of my artwork is really second best to the process. I think you've really covered it well. Mm -hmm. So many elements that we all look yep. for and to, you've really described to us really well mm -hmm. what really m completes you yes. as an artist. Mm -hmm. And you can share that with your students or our viewers for that matter, yep. that this is where it's all at within each of us uh, from our hearts and mm -hmm. what really kind of paints our own picture or what have it, landscape of exactly. Randy Rickards or Rick J. <laughs> so that's right. Excellent, excellent answer. Um, was there one in one person you might would you like to name one person that really inspired you? Um, I don't think I can say one person, but I can narrow it down to my mom. Mm -hmm. um, her name is Diane and my dad, his name is Kenny. Uh, my mom, she doesn't find herself a creative person, but she's creative in her own ways. And she never prevented me from making a mess of her house. Um, <laughs> and, and my dad, he's, he's a handyman, um, very good at problem solving. And when I grew up, he did a lot of woodworking projects. Oh. Um, and he could fix anything. And I think I saw the reward of being able to do something for yourself. Oh, um, and then in, since high school, my husband is my high school sweetheart. Um, uh -huh. He has always been a huge motivator of my artwork and um, what I do. And he really drives me to when life gets busy with kids and a job yes. and this little farm we have going, um, still giving me the time and the space and the support to keep going and making my own artwork. Excellent, excellent. Mm -hmm. Sound like you have a great foundation and a yes. great backbone now and mm -hmm. support uh, all around. So thank yes. you for sharing that. Yep. Well, can you share with us so briefly uh, your favorite mediums and subject matter when completing a piece? Uh, and please describe uh, for of yours some of your favorite pieces, if okay. you would. Yeah, I could definitely do that. Um, I love watercolors. Um, I really enjoy acrylics. Um, just for a larger scale. And then um, clay has been a passion of mine since middle school. I took a class with an aunt when I was in middle school and um, there's just something about playing in the dirt that's always yes, fun. You can never outgrow that. Um, but I learned once again through my master's program that art doesn't have to always be um, technically beautiful. So I discovered staining my clay through food products, um, different forms of stains, um, because they actually soak into the clay and become more natural sure. in that essence. Um, and then that kind of led into some watercolor experiments. And then with watercolor, I love that there's so many techniques you can add to it. You know, you can add the vinegar, you can add the salt, um, you can do the wet on wet where you apply the color to the paper and it blossoms and it moves. And um, there's a lot of control that I don't have whenever I experiment that way. So oh, I, I, see. I really like to start a project with something that's a little bit less controlled. Um, and then I find myself coming back to it, trying to take that control back. And um, I tie in a lot of my experiences with nature, things that inspire, um, inspire me from textures to colors to patterns and then i'll bring that back into my own version connecting me to my piece and my surroundings and my feelings um, and through this i understand i'm not always going to reach everybody because my work becomes a little bit more abstracted right. um, but as i said before it's not so much about the product it's more about this process yes. and it becomes very therapeutic for me oh, great. <laughs> um, art is a challenge Continually. If you could mm -hmm. describe some of those favorite pieces sure. in a little amount of time we have, I'll, we'll make sure they're up on the uh, timeline so people can view those. Sounds great. If you were. Um, one of my go to clay pieces is the Supposing Forces, um, where I took two bowls that I had thrown on the pottery wheel and I flipped them over and I decided to alter them, you know, cut into them, swirl into them, draw in these patterns and these textures and these shapes that. I drew from natural references um, and I stained those pieces with mason stains oh, um, instead of the food. I do think I put some molasses on there at the end of it to kind of give it a gloss, but um, that was a little bit backwards for my watercolor because the drawing came first, you know, my oh, connection see. came right. first and the staining came second. Um, but the supposing forces um, really shows this balance I'm continually seeking in my life. Um, being a mother, being a wife, being an art teacher, being an artist. Um, mm -hmm. Nature is a really great mentor for how we sure. can 
apply moderation and how we can seek this balance and we can have this side and this side at the same time. So um, that piece is something that I think I'll be drawn to for a long time. Um, and then Momentum is actually a newer watercolor that I've done. And I started by wetting my paper, my watercolor paper, and I took uh, purple onions, which I always have in the kitchen. Oh. Love to cook with purple onions. Yes. Um, so I took the pieces and I pressed them down into the paper and let them sit for a couple of days. And then I pulled it off and you know that was my map. That was the start. And then I got to explore this map through the repetition of the lines that I used and the, the watercolor. And um, it just all came together as this journey um, that I can really relate to, but it's one of those things I hope my viewer relates to too, even if it's not in the same way that I do. Oh, I see. And uh, you have another idea you'd like to I do, that? yes. I didn't know if I had time. Uh -huh. um, Smokes and Stains is an older piece um, back from whenever I was really experimenting with using food instead of paint. And this oh. one's done entirely with food. Oh, um, I had some rotten blackberries in the fridge. Uh -huh. So I took them and I smashed them into my paper. Um, and they, of course, shot all over the canvas. Sure. <laughs> and then I tied in some tea and some molasses and um, just all kinds of stuff in my pantry. Um, and I painted with those and moved them around. And then I got excited by the wet paper and was wondering what would happen if I chose to burn it with a lighter. So I took the, the back of my paper um, with this lighter and you know the smoke just kind of billows up and the, the values that come through in that, you know, I didn't have as much control, um, but the paper knew what it was doing in some way. <laughs> Excellent. Mm -hmm. Now, some of you, you've been able at time wise to talk about the three of your favorites. Mm -hmm. We'll put some more of those on the time that you okay. shared with me. Uh, but I'd like to now turn, do you have any venues at this time that you would like to tell our viewers where they may see your work firsthand? Sure. Um, currently right now at the DMV in Jefferson City, I have several works of art up. Um, some of them are wall hanging relief clay pieces, which I was a little bit nervous to hang on the walls, but they turned uh -huh. out pretty great. Um, and then watercolors and a couple of acrylics. Um, and that'll be up until August 7th. Um, I do like to also show at Capital Arts frequently. I don't currently have any works up, but viewers can go there frequently and find some of my works. Excellent. Yes, now you're the featured artist for the period of June 27th and mm -hmm. currently through August 7th. So. Uh, at the DMV. As a spokesperson for the Jefferson City Art Club, do you have any news of what's scheduled uh, in the full, in the fall, the, the startup, as we call it, uh, period yeah. uh, for the art club? I do. Um, so after the recent tornado in Jefferson City, our third Monday meetings of the month have changed from um, the church that we used to be at to the community room at the Hawthorne Bank, and um, that's over off of Amazonian Drive. Um, and as I said, the third Monday of the month, and it's at 5.30, um, we do have a Jefferson City Art Club Adults Fine Art Exhibition, and that is gonna be March 27th through April 30th of next spring. Next spring. Yep. Um, and then there's always the Ruth Hogan Art Show, um, which is featured around the old um, Jefferson City superintendent, our arts, art supervisor, oh, um, yes. <laughs> Ruth Hogan. Ruth Hogan. Um, and that will be March 17th. And then there is the Jeff City Art Club Professional Artist Exhibition. Um, that happens every other year. So it looks like the next time that will be happening will be October 2nd of 2020. Um, but most importantly, the fall fling is coming up, um, oh, and that's yes. no that's November ninth or November eighth of two thousand and nineteen, um, and that's always a really good time. I went for my first time last year because I just joined, yes. um, and we had hors d'oeuvres and there were streaks there. Um, we also did a little gift exchange, which was super fun. There yes. was live music and just a lot of good socializing. Um, and it provided us artists an opportunity to bring our work and do you know, a share. The door prizes that um, mm -hmm. there's no charge. No charge, uh, it's yeah. all the artists from uh, mid-Missouri or wherever they would like to come in from. Uh, no charge, it starts about seven, I believe it is. Yep, bye. And uh, there are door prizes. Uh, if you would like to exchange a gift, that would always be welcome too, mm -hmm. if you have a favorite artist from the club. So great, um, we look forward to that, especially that fling, that's always mm -hmm. a good time. It was a great time. Well, Brandy, can you share with us any uh, contact information, such as an email, uh, your website possibly, mm -hmm. or how you'd like to be contacted if someone does enjoy your art or like to see 
where you're going to be um, out next to venue mm -hmm. or maybe even some some work that they would like to have uh, finished by you. That would be great. Um, my email is findingplaceartworks at gmail.com. Um, I'm also on social media. I feel like that's the easiest. Um, and then so Facebook is Finding Place Artworks. And then on Instagram, it's also Finding Place Artworks. Yes. Um, so those would probably be the best three spots to reach out and see what's going on in my life. <laughs> Excellent. Mm -hmm. Well, Ms. Brandy, Ms. Rackers, on behalf of JCTV, Missouri Art News, I want to thank you for sharing here at JCTV. And um, it's been a pleasure to learn more. And we look forward to seeing uh, uh, more of your work, your awesome artwork. Do you have any closing statements for us? Um, once again, just thank you for this opportunity, and I look forward to being part of Jeff City community more and more as I continue to grow as an artist. So. Well, thank you so much, mm -hmm. and I wish you the best at uh, the new uh, 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 teaching position. Thank you. And we'll be seeing you at the meetings, I'm hoping, mm -hmm. and uh, also the, uh, the little one. Yeah, on the thank list. you. I'll need it. <laughs> yes, thank you. After the break, we meet artist Lainey Strange who has some beautiful work that you should like to share. And I'll be proud to share those with you too. So stay with us, we'll be right back. You're really not that talented. You're not attractive. Too fat. You're too short. Too old. Why don't you just give up? Give up. Give up. Just give up. Welcome back to JCTV, Mid-Missouri Art News. Uh, I'd like to now turn to artist and spokesperson uh, for the Jefferson City Art Club, Lainey Strange. Uh, I'd like to welcome her to JCTV, Mid-Missouri Art News. I've been looking forward to this occasion for quite a while. So welcome uh, to Mid-Missouri Art News, Ms. Lainey. Thank you. Glad to be here. <laughs> and Lainey, if I may call you by your first name, yes. uh, please tell us, as you would, a little bit about what makes up the world of Lainey Strange. All right. Well, let's see. I have lived in Jefferson City for about, I'm going to say, it's, it's been about 30 plus years. We moved from a little town called Clinton, Missouri, and then my family originally came from Kansas City. So, but I've lived here longer than anywhere else. So this is definitely my home. Um, and I am married for 15 years. I have a 13-year-old daughter and a 19-year-old stepson. And I went to um, University of Missouri, Columbia for my oh, Bachelor of Fine Arts. Excellent. And that's kind of where I started off kind of focusing there on graphic design and drawing. Those are kind of my emphasis areas when I went there. And um, anyway, have kind of stayed around here. I work for the state doing web development work. I see. And I've been there for over 20 years and have really, really kind of enjoyed that. That's kind of when I first started and I continue, I've been able to kind of interject some artistic you know, ability into that as well because I've been able to do web design work and stuff like that over I the see. years. So, so I've been able to, you know, work that in in uh, in some way through through my different jobs. So that's got to make the job a little bit more interesting, and I yeah. look forward to reporting. That's a, yeah. a, a great yeah. tenure you have uh, going with the state. Uh, yeah. That's excellent. Do, is there one one person? Uh, by name you'd like to say hi to, uh, do a shout out? Or? Well, let's see, I, my, my family definitely, um, they're very supportive of my artwork and finally, the, better late than never, I finally have more of a little art studio corner set up in my house. Oh. I always seem to not have this real formal dedicated area so they've been very nice you know i just kind of go off in my little hole sometimes yes. and do my work Excellent. and they know where i'm they know where i'm going to be <laughs> they've learned but i'm so excited that. to have my own dedicated yeah, space they it's have really to give, uh, mom her space exactly <laughs> the, the little it i guess it's an indoor she shed but it's you know oh. it works out pretty well it's still working out. 
and really enjoy my art club member friends and um, I, I you know, I'm communicating with them a lot. I recently decided to um, uh, participate in the juried registration for Bust of Missouri Hands, long overdue, but yes. I was able to lean on a lot of the art club members and get some feedback on what I was turning in, oh, so it was really? kind of nice. Well, Lainey, can you tell us, uh -huh. like everyone looks at us, well, how did that person become inspired? Uh, you know, we talk about the DNA, may go back, but at some point, what really was your button that was pushed that uh, inspired you to well, I think become an artist? DNA definitely plays into, into it initially simply because I have artistic family on both sides of my family. Oh, I see. My grandfather was an art editor for the Kansas City Star Super. Um, his whole life, and he painted all his life. So I was around that constantly, sure. um, watching him paint and, and having that influence. And then as I was growing up, um, I started pencil drawings and drawing things that, in, that I liked. Like growing up, we'd go to uh, Colorado trips and I started drawing horses. Uh -huh. And then I would make little illustrated books. And then Snoopy, which to this day I still enjoy, <laughs> um, I, a, 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 that's one of my collector things. I would draw Snoopy and then I'd pair it with, make little illustrated stapled books and excellent, collect excellent. them and give them to people and stuff. And that's kind of kind of how I started, and it just went all the way up. I took every art class I could in high school, mm -hmm. and, and then during college, I focused on like the drawing and the painting, and then I kind of went, kind of moved over to the commercial art area, oh, graphic see. design, ah. and then kind of transitioned over into web design when the internet took off, oh, I and, see. Um, but then always, you know, what was great about college was that it, w it gave me such an opportunity to try all the media. It just was like an eye-opening experience. Oh, I, I could do throwing pots, and I did screen printing, and um, painting, and you know, develop my drawing, and all of that stuff. And so there was, and I had some great, great in, uh, professors in college oh, that inspired me to oh, go certain directions. So great. So really your liked it. High school days was in Clinton. Actually, we moved here when I was about 12 or 13 in middle school. So I went, I went to high school here locally and just took, you know, every single art class that I could and just played and dabbled around in different things. So. Well, you're, I viewed your artwork and we'll share it online here on the timeline. Wonderful. Uh, I think some, some of the pieces are just awesome. I enjoy them every day as we... Uh, communicate on some social media. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Please share with us your favorite medium and subject matter, if you would, when completing a piece of work. Uh, describe it, if you can, also for the viewers, some of the favorite pieces that you now like to look back on or okay. that you're involved with now. I can do that. I, um, growing up, it was drawing. And then as I went through college, I dabbled in a lot of media, but as I, graduated from college, I really started liking colored pencil a lot. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's a rather slow working media, potentially. So in the big picture, I didn't create a lot of artwork, but I, it's, it's one that I still go back to now even. I, but I've done watercolor, watercolor, watercolor pencils and colored pencil are probably my favorite media. And um, Missouri, nature and landscape, and I kind of have picked out different really neat places across Missouri. So I've got a lot of Missouri landscape type of stuff. I love iris. I have a lot of iris paintings and, and drawings and things like that. But I've more recently, I've done like a lot of um, mills across Missouri, mm -hmm. different things like that. And even recently, I joined a Facebook group called Missouri Nature Lovers, and there is a ton of Missouri photographers on there. Oh, They've see. been fabulous about messaging them offline and getting permission to use some of their photos for oh, references. Excellent. And they've been more than happy to, and it, it's kind of like, it, it's kind of like a feather in their cap when you're using their yes. photos yes. Um, for that. And then they, we kind of end up following each other and, and different things like that. So 
it's been kind of a neat camaraderie even through you know nature photographers and things like that when you're using some of their work for sure. for reference photos so those well, are my we, favorites spoke in nature again <clears throat> we look forward to um, have, have you be a part of the run center show next spring yeah i'm looking forward to that i haven't done that one yet oh, so uh, look forward to that all right so now, some of the some of my pieces yes uh -huh. okay um Let's see, I'm gonna start with my Greer Spring, and that's actually one that I just did earlier this year. Mm -hmm. And that is uh, one of them that I used a reference photo from a photographer gentleman named um, Gary Adams Jr., which I, I give him, I told him whenever I would um, post it, I would give him photo credit, and he was all excited about it. Mm -hmm. Great, great photographer. Super. Um, and this, is the, this, this spring is in South Central, um, Missouri and it's just really beautiful because the springs just generate that bright aqua blue water yes. that really oh. you know clean clear water and it really it really kind of you know permeates in the picture and it's oh. kind of what what drew me to it and it had a lot of shadows and then it had some lights in it and um, I really that really enjoyed a, it and it's a, it's a colored pencil <laughs> it's an excellent piece I have said the colors are great thank you sure. thanks mm -hmm. Um, m more recently, I started also um, painting like different butterflies. And actually, mm -hmm. growing up, there was a time maybe 20 years ago I used to paint butterflies. I was um, in entomology, I was in an entomology course in 4 H that my dad taught. And I think that's kind of where, you know, just that interest in insects and bugs and beautiful butterflies and things like that. So I did a, a, a little series of butterflies earlier this year, I've been and enjoying. one of them. Mm -hmm. Oh, I've been enjoying those on Instagram. So, thank you. If you want to give our viewers your Instagram to yep. view. Yep. Um, and actually, I can kind of pop in there. If you probably my easiest one would be to search for Laney Strange Artists on Facebook. Okay. and L-A-I-N-I-E strange and then I've got all my other social media links on there so Ooh, um, so I've got Instagram I started an Etsy I'm I, I'm kind of exploring Etsy right now mm -hmm. um, and started a shop there um, earlier this year and kind of dabbling in that to kind of see what kind of interesting things I can make through my art and sell and um, but anyway, that, that would be the way that you could get hold of me there. But, and I'm also enjoying, I've been doing a, posting a lot more things on Instagram yes, too that I've I been enjoy enjoying them. as I've, I, I started the whole kind of work in progress. I started posting things so you could see the progression of paintings yes, that uh -huh. I'm working on. And, uh -huh. and the Greer Spring one happens to be, I'm doing like a season series and I did another painting that's a fall one. That one happens to be a spring one. And then I'm hoping this year to do the two other seasons and kind of make it a little yes. collection. So, and I, I appreciate your input on some of my paintings that I show as they become uh, uh, develop into a final. Yeah, so I've enjoyed that. Um, yeah, Instagram. yeah, yeah. I've, now, I've enjoyed that. Now, can I ask, um, as we run close on time, any views that uh, venues at this time there people can actually see those firsthand? I believe I viewed an art. Uh, are one of your pieces at the Capital Arts Gallery on Missouri Boulevard. Yes, uh, I have one in there right now. The Life's a Beach exhibit is going on through August 6th, and I have a colored pencil in there, and it is from Tybee Island, Georgia. I don't know if uh -huh. you've ever, anybody's ever been there, but it is a beautiful little quaint, not overly, you know, touristy, neat little place that we went, gosh, about we went there about nine years ago, and I'd get up in the mornings and take really neat sunrise pictures, and it's from one of the um, pictures that I, I use that as a reference photo for I one see. of them. It's like a neat little calm, calm. But anyway, I'm in, in the, the Life's a Beach exhibit, and I'm also planning on putting some pieces in for the, they're gonna have a Give the Gift of Art show uh -huh. later this year, right around Christmas, and that starts November 1st. I put some, painted acrylic ornaments in last year and they they did pretty well i sold i made maybe eight eight or ten of them and most of them sold and um leanne puts up a nice little christmas tree in there and there was 
I remember there being a plenty of room on the tree, so I'll have to just make some more ornaments and see see where that yes. takes me. So, well, it's been Lainey, you've been a member of the Jefferson City Art Club for a number of years, yeah. and, and today you're a featured artist for the period of August 8th through September 19th, uh, following uh, Brandy Rackers, who we just yep. visited with. Um, the, your art will also be featured through that period of time at the DMV yep. in Jefferson City. As a spokesperson for the Jefferson City Art Club, do you have any news uh, uh, or what is scheduled um, beginning September that uh, was not covered or you'd like to highlight? Well, um, I, Brandy pretty much covered everything. We've got our, you know, we adjourn for the summer and we start back up in September. So, so our committee is is feverishly working on our speaker programs. Uh, a great organization since 1903. Right. Well, do you have right. an email address, uh, contact yep. information? I do. Uh, that you'd like to share? So I have like an email address. I have Lainey, L-A-I-N-I-E dot strange at gmail.com. And then I have a, like a Facebook artist page and if you search for Laney Strange Artist, you'll find it. And then I've got my other social media contacts on that page. So that's probably the easiest way to, Super. to find all of them. Well, so. Miss Strange, or Laney, again, if I may call you Laney, on behalf of the Jefferson City Art Club and the and representing today and JCTV Mid-Missouri Art News, I want to thank you for sharing so much with us here at JCTV Mid-Missouri Art News. Do you have any closing uh, statements or? I, um, I am really enjoying this year. I've really started expanding my art as my daughter gets older and I seem to kind of finally get some more time freed up. I've really been focusing a little bit more on my art, which is Great. my passion and it really, it really is kind of fills your soul and makes you feel good. And yes. I'm really, it's really ha has a lot of positive outcomes that I'm focusing a right. little bit more on my art this year. And I hope to continue to do that. So. Well, you seem so inspirational. So thank you again for thank being you. my guest. And uh, thank you. I look forward to seeing you uh, in mid-Missouri uh, art uh, communities, what have you. Okay. So thank you. Thanks. Well, thank you, uh, JCTV uh, producer Glory Enloe for uh, working with us here Grams, and thank you our viewers uh, for always watching that's worldwide now uh, fortunately for youtube so look for more biz missouri art news right here at jctv uh, and and youtube i'm rick j your host saying see you next time